Hello, good day. So good as always to be with you and to share the Holy Spirit. Because in the end, that's really what matters. As the Holy Spirit works through us, um, we really should be instruments of him. Uh, the power of God, each one of us, in whatever world we're in. Growing each and every day more in the work of the Holy Spirit within us. And, uh, the, of course, this is the feast of the baptism of the Lord. Uh, the beginning, uh, really, um, starting of ordinary time. Now, of course, if you look ahead, you'll see that uh, this period won't last very long. Because Lent Ash Wednesday this year, with the second Wednesday of February, and then Easter itself will be the last Sunday of March. So this section of ordinary time here is relatively uh, truncated, short. But nonetheless, we begin with the baptism of the Lord as he's introduced into the community uh, by the one who has prepared, uh, sent by the Lord to prepare for him. And we begin with the reading from Isaiah, just the spectacular reading really basically talking to the people of Israel as they come back from Babylonian captivity in Babylonia. He, and he says, always as usual, uh, skipping around, uh, that the Lord says that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. Expiation. Uh, she has, her guilt uh, has been made up for, her sins have been made up for, atoned for. And that she has been purified from her sins, Israel, the people of God. And now he comes back with power and glory. Nurturing his people so they become more his and less the people of this world. Here comes with power the Lord God. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flocks. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, leading the ewes with care. On one hand, it's like the motherliness of God. On the other hand, the power of God. Then going over to the gospel reading from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, and then 21 to 22. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah, the Christ. And John says, no, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God within us daily, working. Oh, how important it is to have a sense of the gift we received at our baptism. The spectacular gift. The presence of God within us daily, 24-7, presence of the Holy Spirit. Working to make us God's holy people in his image and likeness, his sons and daughters. Fire. It's the purifying, refining fire. At times that's what happens as we go through sufferings and difficulties that this world presents to us. To burn away the worldliness. So that the glow of the gold, the heavenliness, shines within us. The holiness of God. Going on to the uh, second reading, Paul's letter to Titus, chapter uh, chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, and then chapter 3, 4 to 7. The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and live temperately, justly and devoutly in this age. He's remaking us. From worldly people to a heavenly people. 
from uh, people centered in on on uh, the things of this world to a people who are centered in on on God's life within us. The appearance of the glory, once again repeating that theme from the uh, first reading, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness, to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. Sort of an image of uh, Jesus at the sink with the dirty dishes. We are washed clean by his grace. And made anew, shiny and bright. Eager to do what is good. Instead of eager to be a worldly people, a people who are interested in uh, just the things of this world, but eager to do, uh, to be his sons and daughters, a holy people. And he says, not because of any righteous deed we had done, but because of his mercy. The goodness of God doesn't come to us because we've earned it. And the good deeds we do open up the gift of the goodness of God that's been given to us. Like opening up presents. But the presents were from God. Now the work we're doing opens up the presents makes use of the presence, the good things, the, the gifts of God. But it's really God's good gifts that we use to work through us. So that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. His grace comes into us. But the important thing is that we accept that his grace, make use of his grace. So his grace becomes who we are, uh, not just simply uh, a little some, a little help today or tomorrow. But it, we, we become people who are so imbued with his light that the darkness of this world is never to be seen in us, only his light. The end of the gospel reading, going back to that. The Holy Spirit descended upon him, upon Jesus, in a bodily form like a dove. And the voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. He's obedient, Jesus. He, of course, God the Son is, and with the Father is one. And certainly in uh, performing the will of God. But he is saying to the, uh, the humanity, uh, through the, uh, to the humanity of Christ, that even though this person appears to be human, this is my son. I am well pleased with him. That's what we want to hear from the dear Lord. That we are his children. And that he is likewise pleased with us. Once again, the adventure of every year and every day to grow in the Lord, to enjoy the goodness of the presence of the Lord, to live in his strength, be filled with his joy. May God bless us all.